It's time to nerd out again, this time with Bullet Seating Force. Gavin Gu here from UltimateReloader.com. Thank you, Travis, for joining us again. Glad to be here. Thanks. I love these stories. These stories where Travis basically does all the work and then I just <laughs> stand in front of the camera with him. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. So you've probably seen this machine on the channel. I did a detailed unboxing, overview, setup, calibration, and a simple experiment. This is the Amp Press from Annealing Made Perfect. It's a great complement to their Mark II annealing machine. In fact, that was one of the motivations to build it, is how do all these different processes yeah. and all these different case prep techniques affect bullet seating force and consistency thereof. Yep, this is gonna be interesting to see what happens. We <laughs> have six tests we're gonna do today. We have a control group, we have four individual tests, and then we have all four processes combined into one for our end result. Mm -hmm. We're gonna see what happens here with nothing done to the brass. Once fired 308 brass. It was one, once fired 308 Lake City brass. Mm -hmm. That's what I was told it was anyway. <laughs> We're gonna chamfer it, see what the chamfer does. Mm -hmm. We did a nylon brush, you'll see that. And we did a bronze brush. We did just annealing. Then we combined all these processes, mm -hmm. chamfer, nylon brush, bronze brush, annealing, and then in one group here. We're gonna see what these seating pressures are and what we can learn from this. That's right, so what I love about this is we have 10 for each of these. We're gonna show five on the screen and then if we encounter any issues, we have a nice backup yeah. set. Good prep. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> okay, so next, test number one. So before we get into our first test, let's briefly review what we've got here. We've got a Windows laptop, connected to the amp press. The amp press has a motorized ram on the top with a stepper motor and an encoder. It knows exactly where it is along the stroke of the ram. We've got an Ellie Wilson inline chamber type seating die that has a stem. When the ram pushes all the way down on the stem, it's just gonna keep going until it gets to its zero point, which is when the stem contacts the die body. The die sits on top of a load cell. So just like with the trigger scan that we have, which pulls the trigger over a certain distance and reads the forces and creates a graph of force over distance. This is essentially doing the same thing, but with a lot more force in magnitude and over, in some cases, a greater distance. It's connected to the PC via USB cable. It transmits data to the annealing made perfect bullet loader app, and we get a nice fancy graph. So it tells you a lot of information and I'm super curious to see what we're gonna find. So why don't we seat these baseline cartridges? All right, here we go. We're gonna start with these baseline. The baseline cartridges are once fired 308 LC brass that has only been a full length sized and mandrel sized with the Wilson mandrel sizer. Here's our first one. Looking pretty consistent so far. Yeah. There we go. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, there's our first group, our control group. So everything beyond this will be compared to this first data set, and that means it's on to test number two. So what do we got for test number two? <laughs> test number two, same brass prep, mm -hmm. 308, obviously. Everything's the same. All I did on this was chamfer the next. That mm -hmm. is it, nothing Kay. else. So baseline plus chamfer. Baseline plus chamfer. Okay. Same brass, same head stamp. Oh, hmm. interesting. Hmm, oh, interesting. It's 
actually had more of an effect right now mm -hmm. than than what I thought it would. There we go. The graph definitely looks different. We'll compare all these at the end. <laughs> all right. So that means next, test number three. All right, test number three. Same control group brass, same prep. All that has been done to this is brushing on the Lyman with a nylon brush. Okay. okay. Baseline plus nylon. Baseline plus nylon. Pretty exciting stuff, huh? <laughs> Ooh. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. There we go. What's interesting about this, you know, before we get into even comparing one set of tests to another is there's an inconsistency with the initial mm. breaking loose of the bullet, but then as the distance goes down, once, once the bullet is a certain distance in, it really make, is made more consistent. A curve on there. Kind of curious. Okay. Interesting. On to number four. So when Travis woke up this morning, he was <laughs> thinking to himself, what would the bullet force difference be between nylon brushes and brass brushes? Am I right? Well, kind of. I got a late night text from a friend of mine that was like, hey, have you looked at this? And I was like, yeah, I should do the, the brass bronze brush. Because initially yeah. I was just going to do the nylon brush. Mm -hmm. And then I got this text and I thought, yeah, I'll try it. So I actually went out to my shop. Mm -hmm. And here's, here's some footage of that. Putting the brass through that bronze brush, there was a definite difference than the nylon brush. The mm -hmm. nylon brush, it just kind of goes right on. Pretty simple, pretty mm -hmm. easy. The bronze brush was like, you know, if you have a rat's nest of hair, you've been out in the wind all day long <laughs> trying to get a comb through it. Yeah. It was really definitely Aggressive. more friction and more happening there. Okay, well, let's see what happens on the uh, amp press. So exciting. It could be that you've removed some of that carbon that's a, an inherent lubricant. Huh. Interesting. We'll, we'll know the full story when we compare one set to another. Yeah. We want everyone to remember this is not, we're not gonna go out and try and get great groups with this stuff. We are strictly trying to show what this ant press mm -hmm. can tell us on our seating forces. Yeah, in future stories, we will look at things like, does this affect your ES and your SD? And does it affect fl random flyers? But this is a prerequisite step towards that goal. Oh, wow, look at that one. Kay. So it looks a little bit different than I expected it to. Yeah, it did. Okay. All right, that was test number. That was for number four. four. Okay, so on to number five. All right, test number one, two, three, four, five. This is same baseline prep, mm -hmm. annealing only. Okay, baseline plus annealing, let's go. We're expecting lower forces here. That's what I've seen before. Will that hold true here? Interesting. Yeah. You never really know what you're going to see until you see it. But it's fun to guess. Oh. Now, of course, this is bulk brass, Lake City. Mm -hmm. Not going to be the same level of 
quality as some of the other brasses. Yeah, when, when we did the part one of this video, unannealed, we saw a lot of kind of randomness. That was Lapua brass. And when we annealed, it all was lower forces and it was a lot more consistent. But that's just one particular instance, right? Yeah. And there was test number five's conclusion. Nice, okay. All right, and that was just annealing only. Mm -hmm. All right. On to six. On to six. All right, this is a moment you've all been waiting for. All in, baby. All in. <laughs> Every test, test number six, we have Lake City Brass, once fired 308, mm -hmm. that has been full length sized, mandrel die sized with the Wilson yep. mandrel die. It has been chamfered. It has been nylon brushed. It has been bronze brushed and it has been annealed and we combined all that into mm -hmm. one. So this is kind of the tell all here. Yeah. Let's will there be see. will there be a net cumulative effect or will there not? Hold your breath. Yeah. Okay. Plot number one. It looks a little different. Pretty smooth. I think to use economy grade or you know military surplus brass here is interesting. Uh, both the you know, mill serp end of the spectrum and the complete match end of the spectrum are interesting because in one case you're taking something good and potentially making it better. You know, in the other case, you maybe have a, something you can start with and improve. Exactly. All right. Not actually as consistent as I had hoped, yeah. it, hoped it would be, or thought it would be, yeah. but you know, there's our results for what we get. Next, we're gonna take a look at comparisons between these different groups of data. So now's the interesting part. Now we can take all of the different sessions that we used to chronicle the different steps and compare them to each other. And what we've got here is the first five traces. Our control group. The baseline, yeah. Oh. So why don't we go okay. through and Comparisons. So here's the baseline. Mm -hmm. We're going to pull up and overlay the chamfer group over that. Wow. Much more gentle of a curve. You don't get that initial spike. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So I go into the amp and I turn this off. Oh, I got you. They toggle. And then I'm going to turn on, and this is going to be the nylon brush only. Yep. Interesting. Hardly any difference. Very. Okay. So this, this is control group and only nylon brushing. Yeah, all the purple ones are the second group. So the purple ones are the non-control group here in each case. We'll toggle that off, okay. Here's the control group and the bronze brush. Huh. So you get a lower initial. In some cases. Yeah. And in other cases, it was kind of up there in the middle. Huh. Yeah, taking into consideration the brass we're using here. Yeah, true. Turn that one off. This is annealing, and then look at that. Look at how it. Look at how the initial. You do not get that initial spike. It's almost like there is a tiny spike, but it's been collapsed way, 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 way down. down. Yeah. Way down. And this Very is, interesting. So this is control group and annealing. Mm -hmm. Now we will do the control group with all tests combined. Wow. It looks like we have a little bit of an outlier there. Yeah. Uh, on both ends. I will tell you I did this other set, the rest of them, and they were certainly, did not have the outlayers in yeah. this. Can you show me one more thing? Let's take a look at the two different brushes, the nylon brush and the bronze brush together. Okay, here is the nylon brush. And then here's the bronze brush overlaid. Gotcha. So the bronze brush does have less force. There is one outlier there. Um, it's more consistent. The nylon yeah, ones, right? The, the colored the non purple brass. ones are. Yeah. Oh no, yeah, the nylon is the nylon is more consistent. Interesting. Overall, not a huge difference though. No. Very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> the one the one honestly the one that surprised me was the chamfer group. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. 
So my takeaway from that is that chamfering does matter. I think of it as protecting the bullet. Absolutely. And if you protect the bearing surface of the bullet from scratches, that seems like that's going to translate to good things regardless of what the, the bullet seating force yeah, is. Absolutely. So we're learning a lot with this tool, but what we would like to know is what would you like to see? Would you like to see tests like this with ultra premium brass, say Lapua brass or Alpha Munitions brass? And specifically, what factors would you like to see? Different levels of neck tension, different brass prep techniques, different bullets, you know. There's a bunch of different things that we can do with this tool. Drop a comment and we'll start a discussion about where we're gonna go with our testing next. Thank you, Travis, for putting in all of the work to get this set of tests ready. I'm super curious to see how these are gonna shoot. You're gonna shoot them in an AR-10, did you say? Uh, we'll see, eh. maybe. Okay, we got a few 308s rolling around. Yeah. So that concludes this video. That means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not gonna wanna miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting.